Welcome to episode three from the balcony. Today we're taking Affinity Photo for the iPad for a spin. I hope, I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy and everything's going all right for you while we're in our lockdown mode. I've had a little time to uh, kind of play with this app, this uh, photo editing app for the iPad. And I thought I would go ahead and share my workflow, how I'm using this app to uh, edit photos. Now I've only had this app for a couple weeks and I need to start by saying I'm not really all that happy with, <laughs> with, with this app right now. For my iPad, my iPad Air latest generation with three gigabytes of RAM, it seems to want to crash quite a bit. It seems pretty unstable. So much so that I kind of almost thought I wasn't going to do this video. But I've been using it enough and it, I'm getting through photos pretty well. So I figured there might be people out there that, that have aren't having this issue. It appears to be something that Seraf is fam uh, familiar with and it sounds like they're working on an update. So I'm hoping they'll, they'll get this this fixed in, in the next update, uh, get these bugs fixed. It's not unusable. I just find it un unacceptable for uh, for an app to be crashing pretty regular. Let me say that I'm not an expert on Affinity Photo. I've been using the computer version for a couple years and I've just been using the uh, iPad version for just a couple weeks. They're similar enough that I'm going to use the same workflow for the iPad as I do for my computer. I've gone ahead and recorded the edit part of this video in advance. So let's, uh, let's look and see how I got along with it. We're starting with the image in the develop persona. We're going to be working on the raw image. If you push the question mark at the bottom right corner, it will show the labels for each of the icons on the screen. So let's start in the basic studio and we're going to lighten the foreground in this image. We're going to lighten the exposure and the brightness. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to scroll down to the highlights and we're going to bring back the highlights a little bit. We'll work on that a little bit more as we go. And now we're going to adjust the color temperature just a little bit. We're going to warm it up just a little. It's a little cool. Now we're going to go to the overlay icon on the right. There we go. We're going to press the brush and that creates a overlay layer. We're going to resize the brush, make it a little bit bigger. We're going to leave the uh, hardness at 50%. And we're going to paint in the sky. Now let me jump in here real quick while I'm adding an overlay to the sky. I don't always do overlays to my images. The one reason I picked this image is because it was had a wider dynamic range and I knew that that would be something that I could show on a scene like that, how, how I use overlays. But probably, I don't know, 75, 80% of the time, I don't even use overlays. It's just where I have a lot of dynamic range and I want to balance the image before I move it on to uh, the photo persona. So let's go back to our regular schedule of programming. I think I'm just about ready to finish up that overlay. So let's go to the basic studio. We 
and we're going to bring down the exposure just a little bit, darken the sky. Getting more of a balanced image. I think I'm going to erase some of what I've done to this file so far. So we're going to hit the overlay erase tool. I'm going to make my brush just a little bit smaller and put the hardness at, at uh, 0%. I think, I think I'm going to add an, another overlay just for the water. Go ahead and add that overlay. There are times where you could, you might want to add two or three overlays to a, to a scene. You just kind of, just depends on the image. I'm going to go back to the basic studio, and we're going to darken that just a little bit. And if we go back to the overlays, we can use the opacity if we if we, if we want and lighten that just a little bit to fine tune it. looks a little more balanced. I'm not trying to get a perfect image here. I'm just trying to get all the data I need to take into the photo persona. So we're going to go ahead and press develop and we're going to be in the photo persona. Now we're going to click on the crop tool at the left and we're going to level the horizon. Click the arrow at the right and then click on straighten. We're going to drag a line across the horizon and we'll uh, take the corners, the little nodes, and adjust, crop out the parts that need to be cropped out. And when we're done, we'll hit apply. Now we're going to go to the adjustment studio and go down to the HSL. We're going to click on ranges and we're going to start with the yellow and uh, saturate the yellow just a little bit. And then as we're going to do the same with the blue because there's some blue in the sky. We're going to saturate that as well just a little bit. Add a little pop to the image. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to go to brightness and contrast. We'll lighten this up just a little bit. YouTube has a tendency to darken up things, a little, <laughs> darken up my images when I uh, when they get into videos. So we're going to overcompensate a little bit and and try lightening this just a little bit more than I think it needs. Going to add a little contrast. Now we're going to go up to the Layer Studio and click Plus, and we're going to add a Mask Layer. We're going to click on the Brush tool, and make sure it's in black, and we're going to make that tool, that brush bigger. We want to make sure the color is black. We're going to remove what we've just done in that Adjustment Layer, so we can keep the sky darker. Basically just undoing what we did in the adjustment layer. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to change the opacity. We're going to bring it down to about 30%. And then we're going to do the water. We don't want to 
we don't want to bring it back 100%. We kind of like it a little bit lighter. That looks pretty good. We're going to go back to the Adjustment Studio and go to Brightness and Contrast and just, just lighten it just a little bit more. A little more contrast. I think that looks pretty good. Now it's probably going to get darkened up a little bit from YouTube. We're going to click the View tool and uh, flatten the document. Flatten the document. And we're going to go ahead and export it. We're going to click, we're going to, under the pixel format, we're going to make it 16 bit and export it. So if I want to go back and, and make some adjustments to this file, it shouldn't be that hard to do. It's a 16-bit TIFF. Still got a lot of information there I can mess with. I can darken it up a little bit if it needs to be, or lighten it, whatever I want to do to it. Let's take a closer look. Look at some of the details. Looks pretty good. Well, the photo isn't finished till we add a border. So let's go to resize. We're going to change document to canvas. And under anchor, we're going to make that middle center. And under units, I'm going to change that to inches. I'm going to unlock the aspect. And I'm going to add a 0.4 inches for the border. It'll make the canvas 0.4 inches bigger than the image. And we're going to go up to Layers. We're going to hit Plus and add a Fill Layer. And we're going to drag that to the, to the bottom of the pixel layer. And there we go. Now we have a finished photo with a border. So I hope you got something from that little demonstration of my workflow on Affinity Photo for the iPad. I really don't do a whole lot different on the iPad as, than I do on the computer. Just having the ability to use the, the Apple Pencil to be a little more precise is, is pretty neat. So some of my takeaways from this this app on, in, in editing on my iPad. I like that they've really made it to where you can go from the desktop, the computer version, to the iPad version pretty easy. Once you get familiar with the locations uh, of some of the uh, icons and stuff that you normally would use, once you figure out where those are, it's really the same process, and I really like that. I think the app is a lot of fun to use. I'm just not all that happy with the stability of the, the app right now. I'm hoping that at some point they, soon, that they uh, get that worked out, because I think this is going to work well for me uh, for a mobile editing app when I'm away from home, or if I want to be out on my balcony editing a photo. So I, there's a lot of potential here. They just got to iron out a few bugs. So I'm going to end the video right here. Thank you for joining me here on the balcony today. Stay safe. And until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride. Today we're taking Affinity Photo for the iPad for a spin. <laughs> that was my dog. I don't know if you could hear that. She just let one rip. Good timing.